The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us? or for everyone. And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly, I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, may I begin commenting that there are two possible versions for the gospel of this 19th Sunday. What we have read is the longer version, which goes from verse 32 to verse 48 in chapter 12 of the gospel according to Luke. And you can see that there is a chain of connected themes. Um, let's make a bit of a journey following the text. The first part is all about generosity. This is the part in which our Lord says, Sell your belongings and give alms. We may probably remember 
that this was also the invitation the Lord made for a young rich man in the gospel according to Mark, for example. This was a young man that was asking Jesus about eternal life. And the Lord replied, well, you have to be obedient and follow the commandments, the Ten Commandments. And actually the Lord reminds him of them. But this young man says, everything I have done so far, which is a very exceptional case, a person that is really obedient to each and every one of the Ten Commandments. But the Lord goes forward and then says, okay, sell everything you have, give the produce to the poor and the needy, and then come and follow me. That was the invitation of the Lord. That was the invitation. And I'm telling this to you because this shows that this kind of invitation was more the norm than the exception when Jesus invited people to follow him and even to be just his disciples. Because you remember that at the beginning of this text, we heard Jesus said to his disciples. So this was not a special invitation just for the apostles or a selected group of people. This is the common, this is the common rule for everyone. It is outstanding generosity, outstanding generosity. But there is a reason, there is a foundation for that generosity. Because it's not easy for the human heart to be that generous. It's not easy. All sorts of preoccupations and warnings and fears come to our minds and hearts when we think of giving too much to others. So the Lord, before, this is important, before asking for this quality of generosity and quantity, before asking for that, the Lord says to his disciples, do not be afraid any longer, little flock. There is a hint of tenderness in that expression. Little flock, do not be afraid any longer, little flock. For your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. And this, like the Lord telling us, the generous one, the first generous, is God the Father himself. And you are the ones receiving all that generosity. The stream of all goods is coming to you. So in practice, the generosity the Lord is asking from us is nothing else but allowing the generosity that comes from God to pass through us and to reach more people. In that sense, it is not exactly an act of heroism. It is not you doing something extraordinary. It is, but the flow of the powerful, the flow of the powerful generosity of God going through you and reaching more people so that they also experience the generosity coming from God and in their turn they transmit the same gift to even other people and other people. These are the ripples of love if you like. The ripples of love reaching out to everyone because this is the way of renewing humanity. This is the way of renewing humankind. This is the way of transforming 
human history as well. So this is the first part, the generosity part. And then he is calling us to be ready. Gird your loins and light your lamps. That particular verb sounds a bit strange in our present language. Gird your loins. What's that? Gird your loins. Well, it is because ancient people, for example, in the ancient Middle East, they would wear a sort of a tunic, a tunic, of course, I presume similar to the one I'm wearing at this time. It was a tunic, but they were not using a belt. Usually, when they were just at rest or just home, they wouldn't wear any kind of belt. But when they were about to go to work or to travel, of course, they needed to gird your loins, gird their loins. That's what the Lord is telling us here. Gird your loins is a call for action. It's also a call for work. It's a call for traveling. So it is, it is not the passive, it is not the passive waiting, which is very important to understand that Christian hope is not passive waiting. No. Christian hope is guard your loins and light your lamps. Be ready for work. Be ready for your traveling. Be ready. And why is it that important to be ready? Because we do not know the time when the Lord will come back. And again, we can question, we can ask, and why, why is that so important? Because unless you are ready to receive the Lord, most probably you will fall into the pit that is described at the end of this reading of the gospel. I mean, if your life is not ready to welcome the Lord, if you, know, if you don't stay ready to welcome the Lord, most probably you will not consider yourself the steward, but the owner, the owner, you will take the place that only belongs to the Lord. So there is great wisdom in this. Unless you consider yourself the steward, which is, who is ready for work, ready to move on, ready to be active, if you don't, if you don't see yourself that way, most probably you are no longer seeing yourself as a steward. And most probably you have already begun to see yourself as the owner, the owner of your life, the owner of your possessions, the owner of your happiness. Everything we think we think, and we are so, so wrong in this. Everything is under my control. Everything is under control. No. You, you yourself, should be under the control of the Lord. We, because that exactly, that's exactly what it means. What it means to be disciples. But we can ask still, and what's wrong with seeing myself as the owner of my life? 
all the same, it is my life. Well, the description that the Lord puts before us is the following. If that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, which is this? What is this? What is this? This is the description of a life. This is the life of the person that regards himself or herself as the owner of his or her life. This is the description. This is the picture of a person that regards himself as the owner. Okay, so because I am the owner, I have what I need and even more. You remember the gospel of the last Sunday? You remember that rich man that had had a bountiful harvest and was only thinking of himself and his future happiness that was he about to enjoy? Be merry. That's the command he gives to himself. Eat, drink, be merry. It's, it's, it's exactly what we find here. Eat, greet, <laughs> sorry, eat, drink, get drunk. This is the part of being merry. Get drunk. This is what we do. This is what we do with our lives when we forget that we are but stewards, stewards. And the only way to keep ourselves in the place of being stewards, the only way is reminding constantly of ourselves that we are about to be accountable, that we are accountable to the Lord and that the Lord is coming and that he and only he is the Lord. And we are his servants, his servants. Now, it is not bad to be the Lord's servant because, you know, when he comes, well, this is wonderful. I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. So it is not bad to be the Lord's servant. But please remember, what is your proper place? And remember that it is only wonderful to be the Lord's servant. Because... It is about being the servant of the one who loves us, who loves us far, far, far more than we can imagine. May the Lord keep his blessing on us and may we learn to be true disciples. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.